right now. I'm sure many of you are concentrating on uh, preparing for the weekend. We have obviously just finished up our non-pro preliminary runs. We began three days back. And in our extended week here, uh, 2024, we've added several days to make way for the increased participation in our National Rain Breeders Classic. And of course, this is the 27th year of running for this event. We've continued to grow and grow each year. I just want to start by saying thanks to the sponsors that have made it possible for us to be so successful here at the National Rain Breeders Classic. This, of course, is known as the Million Dollar Show, more than a million dollars going out in prize money each year now. And of course, that's due in a large part to that sponsorship, but it's also due in a large part to the attendance of a lot of competitors nominating, of course, your horses to be a part of the NRBC. And today we are going to incorporate a press conference so we can learn a little bit about all of the finalists. And you can see them seated at the table right now in front of our brand new National Reigning Breeders Classic backdrop. And we'll uh, hear from each of them. We've had level one, two, three, and four qualifiers based on a, a big set of classes over the last couple of days. Close to 70 riders showing each and every Every day. So about 210, maybe a few less than that, that tried to qualify for the finals. And these are the top of each of their uh, sections. We, of course, have the level one, the level two, level three, level four champions from the non-pro go-rounds. We also have the prime time and masters winner, winners with us here today. So we're going to start things off by congratulating each and every one of them. Level four ended up with a tie, uh, two entries for a 221. And we'll start things off by asking those level four finalists and winners, including Mandy McCutcheon and Kelsey Flesser, a little bit about their rides and their horses. Mandy, of course, has now been an eight-time winner of the National Rain Breeders Classic, today taking the top honors along with Kelsey Flesser with Done It For Wiz, Kelsey Riding Gonna Make My Dream, which we'll get into a little bit more about the fact that not only was she the level four time winner, but also took a level three championship and the novice horse win that was just presented here in the arena. But Manny, let's start with you. You've got the most experience as far as wins here at the NRBC. Of course, you are a $3 million rider, a $2 million owner. So since you probably likely had more experience on the microphone than anyone else, why don't you start things off and uh, warm up our audience here as Done It For Wins, with lifetime earnings of at least 114,000 plus is now adding to that today and has a chance to go for another big check on Saturday. Tell me a little bit about your horse. You know, he's been a great little horse for me from day one. I got him one week before the Nutritional Fair last fall, and he has performed for me every time I've walked in the ring. He won the Nutritional, won the Congress, second at the Rain and Fraternity. Uh, he's kind of like the little legend that's good. Awesome. Uh, again, Doug, for Wiz, 114,000 plus in earnings. After eight times winning the National Rating Breeders Classic, does it ever get old? Never. But I kind of feel like you're calling me old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I think I'm older than you, so I can call myself old as well if I did that. Uh, done it for wins, one of the qualifiers, one of the winners in level four, but we also, of course, have Kelsey Flester with Gonna Make My Dream. And Kelsey, since we're going to you next and we're talking about your time for the win in level four here at the go-rounds, we should also go ahead and address the fact that you've been the level three winner and the novice horse winners. So you've already collected some nice checks here today. And this, I believe, is the second successful ride uh, by Magnum Chick Dream. Uh, your previous top contestant, I believe, was Chick's Gonna Dream with a 215 and a half year. So let's hear about Gonna Make My Dream, today's winner. Um, I got this mare about a month ago. I bought her just after the horse show here in March, and so we've had a short time to prepare for this, but she's been a perfect fit for me, and she reminds me so much of my other mare that I was successful on that it's been kind of easy. Well, congratulations to you, and personally, up through today, of course, we're adding to this lifetime earnings of 50000 plus. I have a feeling you're going to get to double that here uh, this week. You've already got some big checks coming out of the novice horse division, so a salute to you on that. How do you feel as you're looking at the field of qualifiers for the finals about your chances in that Saturday championship? Um, it's super deep, <laughs> as usual. Saturday. New format this year. We've just finished. 
finish up the three days of qualifying. Tomorrow will be a day off, which the additional days have afforded us a little bit of downtime. What are you going to do in that downtime to uh, keep your wits about you? <laughs> um, I have a four-year-old, and I'm going to show across the street some of the ancillary classes to kind of keep my mind off of the finals and just get in the pan a couple more times. Hopefully, that works out. All right. Well, good, good luck again with Gonna Make My Dream. Again, tied for level four, top finish in the non-pro go-rounds, the novice horse winner or champion, and also the level three independent winner with that 221 score. Next up, we have Kara Malsich, and she was your level two winner in the go-round there with a 218 and one half. Now, you had experience in this venue before, I believe, just over a month ago. Did you take a win here in Tulsa at the ride slide, or am I correct about that? Reserve chair, excuse me. Yeah. Reserve chair. Last one. All right, so do you think that that experience here in Tulsa helped you out at all? If you want to come to the top of the field, you want to? I do think that coming here last month definitely helped her be in this arena and see things. All right, well, a salute to you as well, a 218 and a half. And again, the level two <coughs> champion here with Shameless after that reserve championship just over a month ago. How do you feel about your chances there on Saturday? I raised this banger and I was a level of third final summer. She's, she's good, but you never know what, what she wants to be any day, and her other her age wants to be. All right, well, good luck to you again, uh, Karen and Shameless. Level one winner, Miranda Leal with Inferno. And this is the first time Miranda has competed in the United States, if I'm not mistaken, representing Mexico proudly here today. And she finished up with a 217. Not only is it your first time showing here in the U.S., it's also the first time of uh, actually showing Inferno, if I'm not mistaken. So how do you deal with the pressure of that when you're in a debut competition like this? I mean, I know it's like exciting and just the nerves all around, but I just, since it was my first time running here, I just enjoy the ride and whatever comes from it will be fine with it. So, turn out good for me. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> and any day you're on a horse is a good day, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So you just try not to let the uh, competition itself stress you out too much and just plan on having a good time and, and it all works out. And obviously, because you're taking that level one win with Inferno. Tell me a little bit about your horse since you've had a short time getting to know. Uh, what have you guys done together? And obviously with this win, what do you know about so far? Um, I started riding him on January. Since I have work back at home, I just came for the weekend and it seemed like we made a pretty good match. So then I came, I went to Gainesville last week and rode him again and well that was about it. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so that's it for a level one winner and another of our qualifiers here for the Saturday final. Congratulations to uh, Ryan Allen once again representing Mexico. And now we have three riders who have tied for the prime time win and one of these three riders along with that prime time uh, win in the non-pro go rounds is also going to be our first ever Masters winner here today. So we'll start off with Charles Beater Holt with I'm a Magnum Survivor. Again, it's our first time for the Masters division here at the National Reigning Breeders Classic. How do you feel about the division first of all? You happy to be a part of that? I'm always happy to have another shot at winning something. Indeed, and uh, so tell me a little bit about I'm a Magnum Survivor. I had him since early in his two-year-old year, and I've done all the training on him. He's been uh, just a joy to train in this show. I, I, I got to show him three times as a three-year-old, then as a four-year-old had an injury, so I only got to show him one time. So this is his fifth or so, but he's been a dream to well, salute, salute to you on that Masters win and a prime time tie with these three ladies to your left. We'll go ahead and uh, talk to Nicole McDevitt, who was another of the uh, winners here in the prime time division. I Shine at Night was your winner. Of course, uh, Nicole, you came to the last set. You were the first of three remaining when we come out of that last drag break. You had a chance to watch a lot of runs up to that point. How did you feel your chances were when you came into the ride here today? Trust him and I don't know. 
He's just a great horse. <laughs> you didn't have any issues with the pressure of being a lady uh, assessing a lot of good I'm rounds really going good. on? I've been training really hard with Eric Cadeo for the last five months, and I felt I felt confident. Right, we're going to just check on that sound real quick upstairs there. Nicole, I shine at night actually had some success under Jordan Larson as yes. well, correct? Yes. Tell me a little bit about that success. Well, that Jordan was jumping over me, and um, I thank the Lord that we got him because he's very special. And um, Jordan won a lot on him. We took a bunch of money in with him. And, and then um, I started riding him five months ago and with Eric Cadeo, and it's been great. He's a really good teacher and trainer, and he's taught me a lot. And I went in there with confidence. Good. That's what we sort of wanted to know there. You came in late in, late in the uh, draw, but uh, nicely done to make it to the top of the prime time list in that tie. And as you mentioned, Jordan showing at the run for a million, also showing, I believe, here at the NRBC as a finalist of the Open Division a couple of years back in 2022. Yeah. So, of course, it's had experience at the NRBC, though, of course, back during that time, it's when we were in Kings. So we just got to Tulsa recently, so it's really a new experience for this venue in the NRBC. But congratulations to you. And finally, Jennifer Greenlee. <laughs> Also part of that time, the prime time division. Jennifer, tell me a little bit about God a lot of his ass. Um, well, she's a four-year-old who got her um, after the futurity from Ruben Van Gogh, and um, so this is my first time showing her. And uh, her name is Bella, and she is a lot of character. And of course, I didn't even know what to expect. She's super easy to get home. Um, and she well, congratulations to one of your multiple rides there in the uh, non pro go rounds that got a lot of pizzazz now, a uh, qualifier. Um, I can't avoid asking this question because I have a lot of background in other sports. You made a transition quite a while ago. How long has it been since you uh, moved over from the 100 jumper? It's been almost 10 years now. Yeah. Right. A while, the, right? The, yeah, it's been, it's been a while, yeah. but, uh, but do you ever long for going back into the jumper world, or is this no, you found your I, place here? I found my place. I'm so focused on this. And, oh, I mean, I miss my friends. <laughs> <laughs> One of them who straddles for the winter, so you got to watch it. You want to lose a little bit of regret, right? yeah. And you get to go watch Carly, so that makes it extra fun. Good well, save. <laughs> yeah. I was told to ask a question, then we can just keep it uh, brief with the answers on this, and then we'll turn it over to those representatives of the press. But is there anything, I'd like to ask each one of you quickly, is there anything that uh, the folks don't know about you that would be interesting for them to know? Any kind of secrets? You don't have to share anything, but I would imagine at least one or two of you have something to share. I used to ride bulls, and I went to the NFR in 1981 to the national finals where we were riding bulls. Awesome. How did that treat you? Any serious injuries out of that? You seem to be getting around pretty fun. I'm getting around pretty good still. All right, well, congratulations uh, on that. How about Nicole? Anything that the audience should know about you? Don't you want the tax shop? Am I wrong? I am the tax shop, yeah. Was that going to be your secret? No. Okay. <laughs> what, what else do they know about you? I'm English tax lawyer, and I go to Hunters for you did 30 too. years. Yeah, okay. And now you're 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 full time in the in the rating world now. Is yes. That, that's, that's where you're going to go back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, how about Jennifer? Oh, no, no stories. <laughs> no, she's just going to pass it on down the line. All right, uh, so how about our rider from Mexico, Miranda? Anything that the audience should know about you that they don't already know? It doesn't even have to be horse or Um, I started riding when I was five years old in the Mexican, national Mexican sport, which is Chaveria. Then when I was eight years old, I um, learned reining. And then I, I've never stopped loving it since then. <laughs> tell me, tell me you're the national Mexican sport again as well? It's like um, in Mexico, there's, it's called Escaramuza, which is a team of eight girls that, that are wearing dresses and stuff, That's and so they make cool. a team. So oh, wow. it's a nice sport. All right, we're going to have to dig up some videos <laughs> of that to show for your introduction for Saturday. How about that? Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about Karen? What do you have to say about that? Anything that we don't know about you, your background? No, not picture. <laughs> <laughs> I started riding hunter jumpers, if I can go with that kind of idea, but on the east side of Long Island, where I'm from. Right. Okay. 
All right, and how about Kelsey? Um, I showed Raiders when I was a youth kid and then took a hiatus for a good 20 years and then just started back a couple of years ago. What did you do during your hiatus? Have any involved with horses at all? Uh, just college and life and, yeah, involved with the horses, but not of this level at all. Right, right. And so you went to, went to school. What, what's your, what was your profession? What did you study? I went to Oklahoma State University. My major was agronomy and soil science. I'm from Central Illinois with family farming, so that was kind of my direction I was headed. Great. Okay. But I couldn't stay away from this. <laughs> no, I'm sure it gets in your blood. You just can't stay away. Kelsey, now we're going to turn it over to me. She just won the pageant. You think she did? Yeah, she won the pageant. Excellent <laughs> answer, but that's not going to get you out of answering it yourself, man. So Mandy's somebody, of course, that we're quite familiar with with her wins, but uh, there's got to be something that the audience doesn't know about you just yet. And you're a brand new owner of uh, Leader Dog? Yeah. <laughs>